Well, as we were saying earlier, we have an expert here to talk about the debt ceiling, the history of debt in America, because we've been here before, we'll probably be here again. So there are lessons to be learned from history. And that's why we've got David Thompson, an associate professor of history at Sacred Heart University, joining us now. Thank you so much for joining us so early in the morning. We do appreciate it. Pleasure to be here this morning with yeah. you. And it's always a good chance to let people know about something that is not always accessible in terms of learning about this. Uh, what kind of history does the U.S. have with uh, these debt limit negotiations? Have we ever defaulted on our debt before, and how close are we to doing it now? Yeah, so I think it's important to note that this debt ceiling idea is something that's really only about 100 years old. Prior to that, we used different mechanisms. Yeah. Uh, but in the last kind of couple of decades, things really have become more of a this will we or will we not defaults kind of moment. And as the debt has really ratcheted up since the 1980s because mm -hmm. of a variety of factors, um, it's led to these kind of moments where people really wonder, could we default? And uh, this is getting us pretty close as we come up on that June 1 approximate deadline. Do you think to some degree getting close to that deadline is by design? That th this, These agreements could have been made by now, but there's probably a reason they haven't. Yeah, there's definitely an element of political brinkmanship here, right? Yeah. So the closer we get to that deadline, there's this sense of urgency that both sides are going to have to concede something perhaps in order to raise that debt limit. All right. Now, why is why are we carrying such debt there? Uh, we were talking before. I think a lot of us, our first instinct to try to understand this is to talk about a household. And a household, you would not want to run this kind of debt. But to some degree, it's apples and oranges, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little bit different. And uh, when you look at kind of the breakdown of a federal budget and where that you know debt is coming from, it's things like Social Security, right? It's entitlement programs, yes. some of which is non-negotiable. Yeah. Then we have discretionary spending, you know, technically defense budget, somewhat discretionary, education, transportation. These types of elements are where you can kind of uh, have a little bit of wiggle room. But uh, in order to really knock down that debt, you have to reduce spending, you have to raise taxes, or you, or you have to do both. And that gets to the crux of it, right? Yeah. yeah Republicans, at least they put to, towards that bill that they want to really cut back spending. It, I mean, without getting into politics, it, yeah. it's when, when you're worried about debt ceilings and a possible recession, is that the best time to do it? Do you want to do it when uh, people are a little more flush with cash. How does that work? Yeah, I think, you know, there, it reaches this point where uh, there's a desire to cut back on that spending. Um, tax cuts also kind of have eaten into that debt. So, yeah. you know, you see the president and the administration counter by saying, well, hey, you know, we're, we're just reacting to some of this debt that, that we've kind of inherited almost. Right. And so now is not the time to kind of play politics with essentially paying the tab of the United States. Yes. That being said, the debt limit's been raised over and over and over again. The United States debt keeps going up over time. To some degree, is this a, a problem, a, a can that we just keep kicking down the road? I think so. And I think, you know, I'm a 19th century historian, so you get to the 1800s, there's this fixation yeah. on, like a household, paying off the debt. When we move into the 20th century, there's far more realization that it's kind of here to stay. Right. It's not going away. Um, and as long as we have kind of that healthy kind of economy and GDP, uh, that Issuing this debt and having people buy it, it's actually a good thing. It can be a blessing, according to one person in the 19th century, and I kind of carry that forward interesting. to this day. That's an interesting perspective. Lastly, uh, Janet Yellen, a lot of people really predicting a dire, dire, grim scenario should we default on our debt for a significant amount of time. Do you agree with those assessments? Yeah, I think it's going to, you know, the markets were uh, optimistic yesterday and we saw that. But I think even just getting close to it, not necessarily defaulting, we're going to see the markets react in a really adverse way. And yeah. that could have significant repercussions for uh, the American economy writ large and for people's households. And still, there's a lot of people on both sides of the aisle saying we will get this done. I think a lot of people are rooting that they will get it done before we could possibly start running into problems at the beginning of June. David, thank you for taking the time to come in and give us a little bit of a historical bent on what's happening Absolutely, here. Absolutely. My pleasure. We do appreciate it. Thank you so much.